Bonjour, hello. On behalf of the Paramedic Chiefs of Canada, Board of Directors, and as your president, it is my pleasure to be speaking with you today from the lands of the Lequinjin people, also known as the Songhees and Esqualama First Nation communities here in Victoria, British Columbia. I'm happy to be bringing you some updates of many activities that are happening with your association. And let's start, first of all, with the PCC Leadership Summit. I hope you're saving the date and starting to make plans to join us in Quebec City for our 2024 Annual Leadership Summit, which takes place June 4th to 6th. Now, the program is going to feature a dynamic lineup of keynote and plenary speakers that will focus on the future of our work, mental health and wellness, research, leadership development, and discussing workplace culture. All very timely and relevant topics that I'm sure you'll be engaged and really hope that you'll be there to be part of that conversation. We're in the process of reviewing all speaker submissions and we're encouraged by the volume and diversity of the submissions and we look forward to sharing our summit program with you very soon. Also remember that this year we'll be hosting the 20th International Roundtable on Community Paramedicine and that starts right after the end of our summit taking place over two days june 7th and 8th now for more information on any of this please visit our website and we hope to see you all in quebec city in june at the summit we'll be recognizing some excellence in paramedic service delivery of care through our pcc awards of excellence and nominations are now open the PCC Awards of Excellence are awarded to any person or team who has developed and implemented a process, method, or program that demonstrates extraordinary achievement for paramedic services within the last three years. There are three categories that you can nominate somebody, and these include the Award of Excellence for a Quality Workplace, Award of Excellence for Innovative Treatment or Technology, and the Award of Excellence for a Client-Centered Initiative. Now, the winners will all be informed in advance of the Quebec City Summit, and each winner or group representative will be provided one registration and two nights accommodation at the hotel at the Leadership Summit in June. All nominations must be sent via email to awards at paramedicchiefs.ca. The call for nominations close at 1700 Eastern Standard Time on March 29th of this year. We are really looking forward to seeing the submission of the many nominees that we anticipate as there's many great programs that are taking place across this country. And this is the opportunity to showcase them and have them shine. And we look forward to celebrating the recipients at the summit in June. Now, last update we provided, uh, we talked about the different strategic opportunities that the association is planning in regards to uh, several different key areas of which advocacy was a main one. And we talked about the opportunity to get involved, particularly through our advocacy committee. And the timing of this is, is uh, essential. Uh, next month, April 9th, the PCC Board of Directors will be participating in a day on the hill in Ottawa, connecting with members of parliament, minister commi ministers, committee chairs, and a broad range of policymakers to advance the PCC's advocacy priorities. So again, that's happening on April the 9th. Now, the key messages that we'll be taking to the hill, first of all, focus on caring for the front line. And this is really about making sure that we support the ongoing research into the impact of job related stresses of the health of paramedics. And we know that there's a lot of great research that is happening now. And so we want to encourage that continue. We look to the federal government to help support that um, through policy or through funding. And it's really important that this work continues uh, as we look also to the legislative protection of paramedics. Uh, with increased punishment for threats of violence directed at them in the performance of their duties. Now, this is also really timely because just last week, Bill 321 has passed its first reading at Senate, and this is a great accomplishment, but it's one piece of a bigger puzzle. 
and one step in the broader recommendations from the 2019 Health Committee report on violence facing healthcare workers in Canada. And that work really talked about a broad range of recommendations. And so there's still a lot of work to be done, even with the success of Bill 321. Really what the recommendations in the uh, 2019 report focused on were the um, research, again, to making sure that we continue to research and understand the violence against paramedics, that we discuss and, and develop promotion uh, for prevention of paramedics. So it's one thing for um, prosecution of individuals after the fact uh, where there's very egregious behavior, but how do we make sure that uh, we increase the prevention from this violence from happening in the first place? And that's through other things such as public awareness campaigns in which we can have national approach to making awareness of violence against paramedics, information sharing so that as organizations, as services, we are sharing information about violence and using that as, as ways to help again to uh, prevent it from happening in the first place. And then additional health human resource strategies that we can work on to um, help decrease this violence from occurring. And I did want to mention that we really focus on violence against paramedics, which of course is, is key. But we also want to keep in mind that no violence against any member of a paramedic service is, is tolerable. And in particular, thinking about our call takers and our emergency medical dispatchers who take a, a high degree of, of abuse, verbal abuse, um, and threatens uh, their their ability to do their job in in their work environment as well. And so, making sure that while we talk about paramedics, it's it's also a broad range of our healthcare providers that we're we're wanting to advocate for. So this is a, a key big area that still needs a lot of work uh, to to help move forward. And carrying that message to the hill will be uh, one of our speaking points. A second area is about relieving the pressure. And this is about how we can make sure that the federal government is supporting a pan-Canadian strategy for health human resources. And this is through things such as examining faster interprovincial reg recognition and certification for paramedics. Uh, we want to provide incentives to paramedics willing to work in rural and remote communities. So how can the federal government help support that? And also to prioritize first responders supply chain needs as part of public safety and emergency preparedness so that we have the tools and resources to actually uh, deliver the services that are essential uh, for all Canadians and in, in all communities. And the third area is about expanding patient care. And this is uh, having the federal government uh, have greater federal investment in community paramedicine initiatives to encourage provinces and hospitals to use paramedics to the full scope of their practice and to employ community paramedics in Indigenous communities in rural and remote parts of Canada. And so really ensuring that uh, the paramedics and paramedic services are recognized for their role in the broader healthcare system. And so these are the three primary areas that we'll be taking to the Hill uh, in April, and we will keep you updated as far as uh, those conversations. Uh, and certainly if anyone is interested in more information, you can always contact us, contact me directly uh, at president uh, at paramedicchiefs.com and uh, we'll be sure to provide you more information of course as as uh, that day unfolds uh, and uh, the outcome of that so in closing i wanted to thank you for watching and allowing me to share these updates with you as always none of this work would be possible without you the membership and we encourage you to continue uh, being active as a member and to encourage others to become members uh, and uh, certainly to our partners, uh, because without them, without you, uh, none of this would be possible. So a huge thank you to our gold sponsors, Ferno, Demir's, Crestline, Stryker, ESO, and Prehas, and to our silver sponsor, Zoll. Again, for without your unwavering support, we wouldn't be able to advance and align paramedicine in Canada. And I thank you very much for that. So again, once again, Appreciate you tuning in and uh, finding out what's going on in the association. All the best in the days ahead. And until we meet, take care, be well, and be safe.